Hey guys, in today's video I'll be going through integration in C1. What I'll do is I'll go through what integration is, why we use integration, and I'll give a few simple examples just to make sure it's clear. So, what is integration and why do we use it? Say for instance we've been given a curve, in this case y is equal to x squared plus 1, and we've been told to work out the area underneath this curve between the limits x equals 0 and x equals 4. How do we go about doing this? This is where integration comes in. Integration is a way of working out the area underneath any curve between two given limits. The notation used for integration is as like this, as noted here. The upper limit goes at the top of this integral here, which looks like a vertically stretched S, and the lower limit goes at the bottom of this integral symbol. In this case, the lower limit is 0, the upper limit is 4, and we just put this dx here like so. The term that needs to be integrated would go in this space here. So, how do we integrate in the first place? What I've done is I've tried to, I'll try and explain it symbolically, first of all, before I do any examples. Say, for instance, we want to integrate x to the power of n. The way we would do this is we would, I'll write it in red, we would add 1 to the power term and divide the whole thing by the new power term, which would be n plus 1. So, the integral of x to the n would be equal to x n plus 1 divide this whole thing by the new power term which is n plus 1. Okay so that's how you integrate. I'll just do a few examples um, just to make sure this is clear and a point to note is that when there are no limits you always have to plus a c. Many many students forget this and I'm not sure depending on the mark scheme you may lose a mark but it's a very important to note when there are no limits, you must always add a plus c, which represents a constant. Um, I'll go through why when there, are, when there are limits, you don't need to add the plus c, and that will be explained further down. So, say for instance, the first example, we want to integrate x squared. So, by this rule here, we would say x, 2 plus 1 is 3. We divide the whole thing by the new power term, which is 3, and we add a plus c. Say, for instance, we want to integrate 4x cubed. Since 4 is a constant, we can write this like this. Okay, so where we're just integrating x cubed. So this would be equal to 4 multiplied by x. Um, it will be 3 plus 1 is 4, and we divide this whole thing by 4. So these two cancel, so we're left with x to the power of 4 plus c. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll go through one, one or two examples where the limits need to be taken into account. So, say if we've got a curve x squared, and we want to integrate this between the limits 2 and 4. Okay, so graphically what this looks like is as the following. We want to integrate this curve here between 2 and and 4. So we want to know what the area underneath this curve is between these two limits. So this shaded area here is what we're trying to calculate the area. So this would be equal, the integral of x squared as worked out above is equal to x cubed divided by 3. And what we do with these limits is we put a square bracket and the upper limit goes at the top of the square bracket, lower limit again at the bottom. And we therefore substitute this 4 into whatever's inside this bracket and minus the substitution of 2 to whatever is inside this bracket. So what this means is we say 4 cubed divided by 3, like so, and we minus 2 cubed divided by 3. So this would be 64 over 3 minus 8 over 3, which is equal to 56 divided by 3. Okay, so 56 over 3 represents this area here. Now, going back to the first example, y is equal to x squared plus 1, what I'll do is I'll solve this question just over here. So we want to integrate x squared plus 1 between the limits 0 and 4. So, first of all, we can integrate this x squared. We know that to be x cubed over 3. 
And the integral of any constant basically is x. So the integral of 1 is equal to just x. The integral of 2 would be equal to 2x. Since this 2 can be taken outside of the integral, and we're just left with the integral of 1 multiplied by 2. So this can be written as 2, 1, like so, which is just equal to 2x, like this. So the integral of this 1 would just be equal to x, and we would therefore put the square bracket in, 4 and 0. So this would be equal to 64 over 3 plus 4 minus zero. Okay, so this area here is what this sums up to be. Okay, now I did say I'll go through why we don't need to add the C when there are limits. This is because when there are limits, say in the x squared case, two and four. When we integrate this, we get x cubed over three plus C, four and two. The reason we don't add this c when there are limits is because they cancel out. So this would be 4 cubed over 3 plus c minus 2 cubed over 3 plus c. So as you can see, these c's cancel out. So therefore, we don't need to include the c when there are limits. Only when there are no limits, as here, we add the constant c. So I hope this uh, video makes sense. The best thing is just to practice, practice, practice. And I hope my um, teaching has helped you guys out. Um, please check out my other videos and I hope you have a great day. Um, thank you very much.